we're about to see a simple reflex, an automatic reaction. Man touches something hot, hand withdraws instantly. Movement resulted from a rapid automatic sequence of signals passed by the nerves. No thought was involved. This chicken, panting to cool itself, also responds to heat by reflex action. It didn't have to learn how to pant. Again, no thought is involved. Response is automatic, a reflex. But simple though reflex actions appear, they involve five separate steps. The first is a change in the environment called a stimulus which triggers the response. In these examples, that stimulus was heat. The second step is the detection of a stimulus by receptors, in this case, sensory nerve endings in the skin. Step three is coordination or processing. In this example, sensory neurons pass a message or impulse to an intermediate neuron in the spinal cord, which processes it and generates an outgoing impulse. This travels rapidly along a motor neuron to a muscle. In step four, this muscle, known as an effector, responds to the stimulus. This response is the fifth and final step in the chain. Of course, people can also respond in more complex ways to stimuli. Like the chicken, this woman feels hot, but she's learned by experience how to cool the room. In using this information, she demonstrates a learned reaction, not a reflex. Scientists often define learning as a change in behavior resulting from experience of similar situations. A learned reaction follows the same basic steps as a reflex. It starts with stimulus and receptor and ends with effector and response. But the coordination, the processing in between, is more complex, with the result that individuals respond differently. A reflex response to a stimulus, like this sudden noise, is normally the same in all members of a species and similar in most species. But most learned responses are the result of signals being processed in the brain. And there they can take any one of literally billions of different routes. Let's see one of the simplest. We start at a relay center which sends a signal to a thinking decision-making area of the brain. A decision is made. The outgoing impulse passes through the motor control center down the spinal cord and connects with a motor neuron and effector organ as before. But it took a human to process this learned reaction. Hens, by contrast, are only bird brains. Surely they can't learn or think? Or can they? Now here's another uncool customer dealing with excess heat. Is this simply a reflex response? In fact, this hen's been taught to peck a switch when she feels too hot, which turns off a heater. This involved learning from experience and the use of some very complex parts of the brain, so this isn't a reflex. Like the woman, the hen demonstrates a learned response. Animals, as well as humans, are capable of using their brains and reacting in a considered way to changes in their environment. The extent of their learning and intelligence is much greater than was realized 50 years ago when these intensive rearing systems now widely used in food production were first devised. The ancestors of our farm animals led active and complex lives in natural habitats in which learning from experience was essential to survival. Are they content in today's systems which allow them little to do other than eat and sleep? In recent years Animal behavior scientists have devised ways of asking animals such questions to discover what goes on in animals' minds and what they think and need for a satisfactory life. The scientists have looked for answers in the stimulus response chain. By studying animals' responses to stimuli and with ever increasing understanding of coordinating processes in the brain, scientists now know that farm animals can learn, remember, reason and predict in quite remarkable ways. Their minds and consequently their needs are very much more complex than previously realized. Still not convinced these aren't just dumb animals? Then let's do what the scientists did and ask the animals themselves just what they think and how they think. To do so, we too must track them through each step of the stimulus response chain.
You've seen how heat can stimulate a response. These animals are reacting to another environmental stimulus, light. As the first light of day dawns, free-range hens take a dust bath. Animals react to light by starting to groom, feed, explore, play, and socialize, if they live in an environment which allows them to do so. Light also stimulates hens to start laying eggs. These days, usually dim artificial light, as most laying hens are permanently caged. By keeping lights on 17 hours a day, farmers stimulate them to lay more eggs. Animals respond to some, but not all, stimuli from the first moments of life. Some of these piglets were born less than an hour ago, yet already they respond to stimuli guiding them to their mother's teats for milk. Let's see how scientists have asked newborn piglets to reveal which stimuli they perceive and which they don't. This is an artificial udder. It doesn't look like an udder to us, it can hardly do so to a piglet, but the black rubber sac feels like an udder and is filled with warm water bringing it to a similar temperature. This piglet responds to the sac as if it were an udder. It nuzzles and attempts to find a teat. Tests like this reveal that newborn piglets respond to stimuli of warmth and texture, but little else. But there's no fooling this piglet, a much more sophisticated character at the age of just two hours. Already it's beginning to respond to additional stimuli, such as colour and chemicals detected by the sense of smell. This piglet will have nothing to do with an udder that looks and smells wrong. Piglets learn fast. Like us, animals also respond to constant changes inside the body, the internal stimuli. For instance, brain sensors on measuring a decrease in blood water content cause thirst. Hormonal changes inside the animal stimulate responses involved in reproduction, activities to prepare and care for the young, like this pregnant sow's nest building, as well as processes of mating and birth. In intensive systems such as this, animals are still driven by many internal stimuli prompting complex behaviours which would help them survive in the wild. Studies reveal the frequent yet futile attempts of caged hens to nest, forage, preen, dust bathe and flap their wings despite lack of material and space in which to do so. By releasing these hens, their feathers pecked and worn from months in the cage, we can discover how they respond to stimuli they've never before encountered. But first, we must consider how they'll detect such stimuli, which brings us to the second step in the stimulus response chain, the receptors. Like us, Animals have eyes to see, ears to hear, noses to smell, and sensory nerves with which to feel, the sense organs, or receptors as they're called. But don't assume these hens see exactly as we see. Birds' eyesight is considerably more acute than ours. They detect smaller and more distant things. With eyes set to the side of their heads, they also get a wider panoramic view of everything around them. So these birds depend largely on their eyes to assess the rich new world of external stimuli in which they've suddenly landed. Sense organs or receptors of animals differ in efficiency and capacity from ours and those of other species. Some of their senses are more acute, some less, some just different. This resting sow shows the powerful receptor on which pigs largely depend. See how she uses it to keep an eye on, or rather keep a nose on, what's going on around her. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. Pigs, as you see, can quickly learn to perform domestic doggy tricks. Like dogs, they also have hundreds of times our capacity to detect smells and are sometimes used to sniff out illegal drugs. By hiding breakfast cereals among similar sized pebbles and placing them in an out of sight container, we let this pig show you the remarkable capacity of her scent receptor. See how quickly she smells food.
This way, she also demonstrates another highly efficient receptor. The tissue round a pig's mouth is much more sensitive than our fingertips. With this delicate and discerning sense of touch, she has no difficulty picking out cereal from the pebbles. Despite centuries of domestication and decades of intensive farming, farm animals retain most behavioural abilities of their wild ancestors. Those remarkable scent receptors still help pigs detect and respond to stimuli which signal danger in a way which would have increased their chances of survival in the wild. These pigs are entering a slaughterhouse. The usual loud noises of slaughter machinery have caused a previous sow to urinate in fear. Now, though all is quiet, the pigs, thought to be able to smell an alarm substance in their predecessor's urine, hesitate, alarmed and alerted. In sheep, ears are particularly efficient receptors. You've heard of a kidnap. You're about to see a lamb nap so that a ewe can show us how she uses her sense of hearing to locate and identify her own lamb. While the ewes are distracted by food, the farmer captures a lamb and places it in a prepared hide. The mother's identity becomes clear in seconds. She looks around and begins to call. Another ewe appears to respond to her concern. Scientists have observed that sheep often form a close companionship with another animal in the flock. The ewe considers the possibility that the lamb has strayed into the next field. See how in her search she uses her senses of sight and smell as well as hearing, her light, chemical and sound receptors. The lamb is only a few days old and slow to bleat until he hears his mother and she hears him. Even when several lambs are concealed in different hides at the same time, studies reveal that each mother can identify her own lamb by sound alone. The lamb is released. See how the mother uses her scent receptor to confirm that Yes, this is indeed her own lamb. By now, spring is underway and warm enough for our still sparsely feathered battery hens to step outside into a new world of colour. Reared indoors, these birds have never even seen the colour green, yet their eyes are able to perceive an even wider colour spectrum than ours, a broader rainbow. Birds have the most complex colour vision of any animal. They detect colour hues we cannot see. No one knows exactly how colours appear to them, but a bird's eye view may well be as different from ours as this. What we see is not what they see. Their sensitivity to ultraviolet light also reveals patterns on petals, visible to them, but not detected by our own visual receptors. Their physical coordination has much improved since they released from the cage which didn't allow the exercise necessary to maintain muscle and bone strength. Now at the next step in the stimulus response chain, we'll learn how they and other animals mentally coordinate and assess stimuli. These calves are demonstrating the simplest form of learned response known as habituation. See how vigorously they respond to a possible threat when a scientist opens an umbrella. This is a technique used to train police horses for crowd control. But as the umbrellas opened again and again, they respond less and less. They've learned this stimulus doesn't signal anything to fear and incorporated the lessons of experience into their response. Animals can also predict what is about to happen by employing a form of learning called classical conditioning. They learn to associate a stimulus with a particular response. These sheep grazing by a lane ignore passing vehicles. 
they too have learned by habituation not to waste energy by reacting to something of no importance to them. But a vehicle which is important to them is about to appear. The farmer's Land Rover, which brings food each day. They instantly distinguish its appearance and sound from that of other vehicles and react appropriately. They've learned to associate the Land Rover with food. Here, by classical conditioning, Animals have learned to link something the farmer does with a particular result. But they can also learn to associate one of their own actions with a result. On discovering the outcome of an action is desirable, they often repeat it, becoming increasingly skilled. By such trial and error learning, animals become capable of exerting some control over events. Since their release, our old friends, the battery hens, have learned to run an obstacle course which demonstrates a whole range of such learned responses. Each hen must peck a key to release a catch, squeeze through a small space, tightrope across a thin pole, peck a wire loop three times to instruct a computer to release a door, Take the right turn at a T-junction and leap over water, all in order to reach a box where she can make a nest to lay her eggs. Animals' ability to learn by trial and error is put to good use in some more welfare-friendly farming systems. These sows are group housed. Farm animals evolved from sociable species and retain a strong need for companionship of their own kind. Each sow wears her own electronic collar to enable her to be fed a specific daily quantity and ensure she doesn't eat her companion's food. The sows have no difficulty in quickly learning how to operate this feed station in which a computer recognizes each collar, dispensing food accordingly. The animals can even learn to outsmart the computer, given half a chance. Those happening to find spare collars have been discovered regularly carrying them to the food dispenser to get a second helping. In behaviour patterns like this, animals have learned to link stimuli with events which will affect them directly. But not every type of learning can be explained by such links. Here, lambs are engaged in observational learning in which an animal learns from another animal's experience. See how the milk-fed lamb explores his mother's constant.